I want to start this video off by celebrating something important that's a little unrelated to the overall topic of the video, but one that calls for celebration. So let's pump our fists and wiggle our fingers together as we say, rest in peace to James Corden's Late Late Show. That's right, it's finally over. We've survived the bubonic plague of bad television. James Corden's show is off the air officially. And I also love that now we have like some classified documents finally releasing that confirms what we all knew. That nobody fucking watched James Corden's show. It was a colossal flop. It was losing 20 million a year apparently before they finally decided to take it behind the barn and put it down for good. Just execute it. There is nobody in the world that likes James Corden. I've said it for years now, he's like one of the only unifying things our planet has to offer. We all have our differences, but somewhere embedded deep in our DNA is this common ground of disliking James Corden. And for some reason his show has existed for so fucking long now. It was always a mystery, and I thought maybe I was just boofing crazy pills and like he had huge fans, but clearly not. They were losing so much money on him, and now they finally decided to... To stop the bleeding. It's just such a breath of fresh air. Already the world looks more colorful and less gray now that the late, late show is dead and buried, just put six feet under in its coffin. No more carpool karaoke. I feel like the possibility for our species are limitless now. It's like in Gurren Lagann when humanity goes from living underground fucking cave dwelling troglodytes to breaching into the surface world and then they start evolving at a rapid rate i feel like that's where we're at right now because carpool karaoke is no longer keeping us buried you know that that was the single thing preventing us from reaching a type 2 spacefaring civilization it's just it's so nice now let's get to the actual topic of today's video enough celebrating the end of uh, the late late show I'm sure many of you have heard about this massive writer's strike that's going on right now, where the Writers Guild of America is protesting, so they've all stopped their work in the industry at the moment. There's a lot of reasons for it, but really the primary takeaways are they're not being fairly compensated for their work when it comes to streaming services. So right now they're paid a single fixed residual that aren't tied to viewer numbers and no additional payments that come through when the show shuffles between different streaming services. An example they give is one of the writers for Jane the Virgin is only receiving one to two cents for their residual checks, which is far from the norm or acceptable. And that's because streaming content has blown up recently and for the industry itself, it's still pretty new. So they're not really getting the compensation that they should be, especially when compared to other aspects of the entertainment industry like normal movies or normal TV shows. So streaming is still in that weird gray area where they're getting face fucked when it comes to their compensation. And now they're protesting, looking for more appropriate compensation and fairer pay for it. Which I think is totally reasonable. None of these shows happen without the writers. I understand the A-list actors and celebrities are always going to put asses in the seats and make swamp-ass thrones as people are glued to it for these characters. But those characters are written by these writers and without them, they'd be fucking flat and worthless. The effect of writers on the actual medium is severely overlooked by just normal viewers, I feel. I, I've seen real brain rot takes on this from Twitter about how the writers aren't even important to the shows to begin with, which is mind-boggling that we've reached the point where uh, there's a lot of viewers that are unable to wrap their head around the entire show they watch is constructed by these writers. Without them, it doesn't exist, it doesn't happen, and it doesn't work. So it's, it's super weird that people are trying to belittle their role in the industry and downplay their importance. Even going as far as to call this whole strike a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, hocus-pocus nonsense and that they're entitled. It's so fucked up. Like, for some reason now people are taking up arms in order to protect billionaires in their right to exploit writers like this. I think it's fucking stupid. Like, again, the writers make the shows happen. It's not like your favorite actors that are in these shows go in there and fucking improv every single one of their lines. That's just not how it works. So yeah, I do agree that the writers deserve better pay, especially because streaming has blown up so much, and yet the pay for writers hasn't grown with it. This sector has exploded, yet for some reason the writers have been left behind when it comes to their compensation, so... I think the strike is totally within their right to do. I think it's a good thing. And if you don't believe me that it's a good thing, how about I just show you some of the proof that's in the pudding right now? It, get ready, because I'm about to give you a fucking enema of good news. This writer's strike has already been huge W's across the board for anybody with eyes, because 
since they're striking, a lot of terrible shows have had to go on hiatus, had to go dark. That includes every late night talk show, baby. Every single fucking one of these late night parasites have had to go off air because, they, of course, they don't write their own material. They're not like real comedians anymore. They don't make fucking jokes on their own. It's all fed to them by these writers. And now that they're striking, they have nothing. Thus, they've had to stop the, the programs. So no Jimmy Kimmel. No Jimmy Fallon. We're getting, we're getting everything fucking purged right now and on break. And it feels so good. To not have to have YouTube inundated with fucking god-awful late-show talk clips. Oh my god, it feels amazing. So there's already a huge W there. Already seeing some great stuff from the writer's strike, some good results. But if you want the best possible news from the writer's strike, you know what else is severely affected? Big Mouth. The worst show ever produced by human beings is currently getting hammered because of this writer's strike. It is unable to continue production as of the moment, and we can only pray, have our fingers crossed, that they will just shut down the upcoming season and, and call it quits. Just put the kibosh on the entire series, because Big Mouth fucking sucks. Just close your eyes and envision this utopia with me. No James Corden Late Late Show. No Big Mouth. That is a serene existence. That would actually unlock the full potential of our brains. It'd be like taking that pill from Limitless. We would fucking invent teleportation technology the next day. Now, e even better news, even if Big Mouth does unfortunately continue, if we're cursed for another season of Big Mouth, it's the final season. So there won't be any after that, which... That's great news, but it's bittersweet because we could just not have that season air to begin with, so... Regardless, though, Big Mouth on the Horizon is soon to be finished. Kaput, which is fantastic. I also forgot one other big one that's currently going dark. Another stinker. Saturday Night Live! Saturday Night Live is also affected by the writer's strike, so they're unable to currently continue as is. So just a lot of good W's all around here. Now, there is more to the purpose behind the strike. It wasn't all for the compensation. There is another component to this that I think it's worth mentioning here. They're also wanting to regulate AI when it comes to the industry. AI is also exploding and it is evolving at an unbelievably fast rate. Which is of course a legitimate concern here. AI is already fucking wild. It is frightening how good it's gotten in such a short period of time and it's still very primitive. It is still very early on in this technology so it's only going to get better and more refined. So what the Writers Guild is looking for here is some regulation where the AI can't be trained off of their works, their works would be protected so that way the AI can't be building models based around their scripts, can't be like generating scripts of their own based on their work, and also they can't really be using AI to go through and change some of their work or undermine it and, and shit like that. It's just looking for some level of protection for the writers. It doesn't seem like they're trying to completely outlaw it, make it illegal when it comes to AI in the writing room or forbid it entirely because AI can be used as a good tool for writers as well. It's just looking for some level of like regulation or just some openness to discuss how they can utilize AI in different ways there. At least that's how I understand it. I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like they're just trying to get rid of it entirely from writing the writing process. So yeah, overall, uh, wishing the best for the writers here with the strike. From what I can tell, it doesn't seem like the powerful suits out there are really responding at all to it in any meaningful capacity at the moment. It seems like the attitude's kind of just a uh, rub some fucking dirt in it, get over it kind of thing. But I guess we'll see how that goes when their biggest programs start to feel the effects of the strike because the WGA is huge. They, they, they do a lot of writing. So uh, I guess we'll see how everything plays out, but just want to talk about it a little bit. That's it. See ya.